Welcome folks to another color series in Adobe Illustrator. I'm Jason and I'm going to show you how we're going to use the color picker to pick our colors. I've got a shape filled with a color and I want to do some exploration using my color picker at the bottom of my toolbar. I'm going to double click on the color square to call up my color picker. Now when we call up the color picker, there's different views that you can see. The three ways that you can change those views of seeing the entire spectrum, as well as your um, how light or how dark this is, is by clicking on either your hue, your saturation, or your brightness buttons. So depending on the default, you may see this in hue and saturation, where you can change the hue by sliding the pointers up and down the entire spectrum, and then choosing the saturation or brightness by moving the circle around. Most people like to have it on brightness so that you can see the entire spectrum, and then you can make it lighter or darker with that particular shade. If you do want to go to RGB, then you are going to get a completely different spectrum here, where you can go ahead and control your reds, your greens, your blues, and move it around the entire spectrum as well. There are no radio buttons for CMYK, because CMYK is for print, and what you're looking at is on screen, so you have to simply just go in by value, and it's going to give you the closest value to CMYK as it can represent on screen. We also have hex colors too. So if you're going in and you're putting in a color for a web, going back to the brightness button, I want to show you one interesting thing. As I go in and I choose a color here, I can move this around and I notice sometimes that I get this little warning symbol right here. That warning symbol is something very important. When I get a warning symbol, this tells me that this color is out of gamut. What is out of gamut? That means that this color is fine for display on a light emanating device, tablet, phone, monitor, television, but it's not going to work for print because it is out of the range that can be made of CMYK. So while this color may look really good on screen, it's not going to print. So if you click on either the warning or the box down below, that is going to correct it for print. It's going to take out some of its intensity and then it's going to be basically print safe. So whenever you see that triangle there, you want to click that and it will reconfigure that to get it to the closest print color. Sometimes you'll have a big shift, sometimes you'll have a very small shift, but it is important. So we can do that. Now, when you see this little cube under here, this is going to be web safe colors. So if you click on this, it's going to then bring it into web safe color that is going to give you a hex code right here. We can also go over to our color swatches and when we click on our color swatches, we can see that we have our entire list of color swatches here, just like we have in our swatches here. Going back to the color models, then I go back to my HSP, RGB, CMYK, and hex colors. If I click on web only colors, these are going to be all the web safe colors, so it severely limits the colors that we have right here. Uh, useful if you're going to be doing stuff for the web, and I click OK. So it changes the color of my object. Now remember, when I use the color picker, it does not put a swatch over here in my swatches panel. It just simply gives me that color wherever I've chosen and whatever I have selected in my document here so that I can then use that color but I don't have it any place else in my document. Now, why is the color picker so nice? Well, I want to show you something that's really awesome. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this shape, but I would like to create lighter and darker versions of this particular color. So I've duplicated this and I'm going to select the blue background, go to my color picker, double click on it. And in order to do this, I want to keep my brightness button selected. Now, instead of going around here and moving this all around to get a lighter or darker color that I'm working with here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of that, go back in. I'm going to click on my brightness button and I'm going to then get a darker shade of that color or a lighter tint of that color just by sliding up and down. Okay, You notice how that little circle isn't moving at all, which is great. 
So if I ever want to go in and create a lighter or darker version of something, I don't want to go messing with the actual color range itself. Okay, I don't want to move that circle. I can just make that lighter or darker, which is really nice. So then if I went in and I choose my eyedropper tool to get that, I can create a nice set of colors here, lighter or darker, but keeping them all in the exact same family. Now, here's one other thing. If you go in and you have a color that you can't go any lighter with, well, you can go into your saturation and that will allow you to kind of lighten it and take some color out of it. You're basically desaturating that color. If you go to the hue, then you can get the entire range here where you can go lighter, you can go more gray. But I find the brightness button to work really well to very quickly darken and lighten up your colors here without moving this around and shifting the entire build of the color. And remember, if you like those colors, then select those colors, go to your swatch panel, add the selected colors to your swatches panel, and you now have those for use as global colors wherever you want to in your document.